Well, <laughs> this history is not very short because uh, for a long time people were coming with uh, similar and related ideas. Like, for example, in 79, uh, Alexei Starobinsky came with a model which was very similar to inflationary model. But then this model was not well known in the West and Alan Guth came with his own. What was the advantage of Alan's model was its transparency and clear understanding why inflation is necessary. So this won him lots of friends. Everybody understood why you should do something like that. But he himself have said that uh, his model did not quite work. This was amazing and this was quite brave. It was so interesting. The idea was so great, but it did not work and did not work. I actually had a ulcer at that time. I suspect that it was maybe induced by this unhappiness of having great idea which you cannot make work. Mm. And then Alan, uh, together with Eric Weinberg, have written a paper proving that this theory cannot be improved. But in 81, I already knew how to improve it. I realized uh, that you can change his model quite substantially and then make it work. And then I was so excited and wake up my wife and I told <laughs> her, look, I know how the universe was created. <laughs> so this was quite exciting. I spent about three months getting permission for publication of this paper, which was a stand standard situation at that time in Soviet Union. And I reported this at some international conference in Moscow. And many of my friends there at the conference suggested me that give us your paper, we just smuggle it without any permission. But something stopped me from doing it, and it was Stephen Hawking. You know, um, after I gave a talk at this conference, next day there was a talk by Stephen, and they asked me to translate his talk. <laughs> but then, in the middle of his talk, he said that this was a very interesting inflationary theory proposal, but it did not work, and I translated and explained why it didn't work. And then he said, but then recently there was an interesting suggestion by Andre Linde how to improve it. And I happily translated. And then he said, but this uh, pro proposal completely does not work for this and that reason. <laughs> and for half of an hour, I translated his ideas why my proposal doesn't work. And all people in the audience were the best people in Russia who came to hear Steve Hawking's talk. <laughs> and my future depended on it. And I was translating why I am such a dumb fool. Not <laughs> okay. So after I translated, I told Stephen, well, I translated, but I disagreed and let me explain why and then I explained and then he invited me to the conference which was the first conference on inflationary cosmology in Cambridge mm. and that's how new inflation started and this was not the end of the story because new inflation also was problematic and in 83 I replaced it by something which I called chaotic inflation and in 86 I found the way how to make this chaotic inflation eternal so define the difference between chaotic and eternal. Uh, well, eternal inflation is um, inflation which can start, but which continues all the time uh, indefinitely, for an indefinitely large time in different parts of the universe. So uh, chaotic inflation just says that inflation may or may not start in different parts. And in the parts which uh, it did not start, well, so too bad. But in the parts where it starts so great, uh, it produces enormously large volume of space. So this is a good, simple, robust mechanism of starting inflation. And this theory of eternal chaotic inflation changed humanity's conception of, of the extent of reality. Well, this is true, and now it has continued being changed because it became an essential part of string theory. I myself must say that I am extremely excited about it.